What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. I recently found this really cool website, Invest Bamboo, and I wanted to see if it was possible to recreate this website in Squarespace using the new Fluid Engine. So in today's video, I wanna go step by step through how I recreated this website inside of Fluid Engine. So I was able to recreate this site using Fluid Engine just as a way to practice kind of learn Fluid Engine a little bit better, and I was able to recreate the site pretty closely. So in today's video, I wanna go over those layouts and just show you how I was able to achieve them. Okay, so the first thing that we'll look at, uh, I'm just gonna go over every section that I built out and kind of explain my process for each section. Um, most of them are, are really straightforward, like this hero section, for example. I just have text over here, and I have it centered in the grid. So right now they don't have any sort of alignment options. So you just have to count the grid cells. So I have it two from the top and two from the bottom. And then I have the image spanning the full height. And I noticed on the other site, like uh, there's not a lot of room on the bottom and I wanted more room on the top. So the way that I did that is I just aligned the section to the bottom and that'll automatically put more space on the top than on the bottom. And then these buttons here are just images that I would be able to link up wherever I wanted them to go. So very straightforward. Here, I decided to build out this section using image blocks. They have this sort of scrolling marquee, but um, I think this, you know, I would just pick the four top businesses and display them this way. And the reason that I went with image blocks instead of like an auto layout section or a gallery is because on mobile, with Fluid Engine, we're able to realign blocks. So I was nicely able to put stack them next to each other. I'll just cover mobile at the end. So the next section, uh, just an image block, and then I have a text block here, three text blocks here. Again, I'm just counting the grid columns. So there's 24 grid cells all the way across, 24 columns, I guess you could say. So each one of these is just four, eight, 12 and that's taking up half the screen and I have a button down below for this section this was a, a little bit more interesting to build out so what I ended up doing was adding an image block so this is this background color here is an image block and I just created a tiny little jpeg image here we go so this green background image is probably like 50 pixels by 50 pixels. I could have made it even smaller. Yeah, it's 41 by 53, and I could have made it even smaller. And the reason why is solid colors can't get pixelated because it, this the picture could literally be one pixel by one pixel, and uh, it would look the same because all the pixels are the same color. So that's why if you ever use a background image that's just a solid color, make it as small as possible. Um, so this is probably just like a couple of kilobytes and it won't add to the site loading time. Squarespace is supposedly coming out with a shape block really soon. So that'll replace this image block hack where you could just drag content, uh, drag like a solid colored box behind content without having to upload an image. So that'll be great when that is added. Um, but for now, I just did this as an image block and then I've placed the text block and the button block ahead of it. So you can move, uh, you can change the stacking order with these buttons here and I've just placed them on top. And then I've just, you kind of, it's hard because the grid doesn't appear over the image. So what I did is I just kind of moved it out of the way and I'm like, okay, I have two cells over here. I have three cells on the top, three cells on the bottom. And then I did the same amount of cells on the right. So I just included two cells on the right. Uh, and then I just matched this image block uh, to be equal as well the same size and then I've set the image design to fill otherwise fit it wouldn't go to the full border of the frame and then here same thing I've just sized the image set it to fill and then here uh, because the background's already white and on the the website there's no like background color here so all I've had to do is just drag the text block and the button block into that section so really really easy and then finally for um, well, you might be wondering how I did this section. This is just an auto layout section. It's the easiest way to kind of get columns to be the same height like this um, and works really well for this type of like boxed content. Uh, and then here for this gallery section. So these are just image blocks that I've dragged and resized and I've set them all to fill so that they'll fill their container. 
Uh, and then it's just a matter of making this image. So this takes up the full half of the screen and these take up half the screen. Uh, and then I've made them just make sure that they're all the same height. Um, and because of the aspect ratio that the images were saved at, they all fit in their containers really nicely. And then for the space between them, so I just set that up by changing the gap. So if you were to set it to no gap, they would all be right next to each other. And then here is the gap between the grid cells. And so I just set that um, by default, it'll be 11 and I've just increased it to 15, which I thought was pretty close to the example site. Here we just have the image of the bell on the left and then text and button blocks on the right. Very straightforward. And then here, this section is really cool. Creates a really cool effect with the mailbox sticking outside the box. So this is another just really small plain white image that I've uploaded as sort of the, the, the border background, you could say, containing background. And then I've just dragged a text block and a button block over it. And again, I've just counted the cells to make sure that the spacing is like pretty even. So it's two cells away from the edge and then it's three cells away from the top and the bottom. Um, so if I drag that back uh, and then for this image, so this is just a PNG image of a mailbox, but I've extended the edge of the image frame uh, one grid cell past the edge of the border. And then I've set the image alignment to, ordinarily it would be middle, but I've set the image alignment to the right. That's why it's, that way it's always like over to the right of the frame. Then I've also set the alignment to the bottom, just to make sure that it's always at the bottom of the frame. And that way, like there will never be a gap below it. It'll always extend to the bottom of this content box and it'll always like over overlap that white border a little bit. And it's such a simple layout, but it's a, just a really cool effect. It makes it like much more 3D, I think, with that just slight overlap, which is really cool. And none of this would have been possible in the classic layout. It would have taken so much CSS to achieve this. And I have used zero CSS on this site, which is really cool. So, uh, and then finally this last section, very simple, just an image block, text block, and then again, two image blocks here for the buttons that I could link up to buttons. So now let's take a look at the mobile view and how I was able to switch up the layout for mobile. So the great thing about Fluid Editor is the mobile layout is completely independent from desktop. So I've completely rearranged these blocks, but it doesn't affect the desktop layout. So here I've just placed the buttons next to each other and then placed the image below. And the cool thing is like, it's so easy to rearrange blocks on mobile with this little arrow toggle. So if you wanted the image at the top, you could, you could do that very easily. But I thought it looked best to kind of present people with the point of the website and then have the artwork below that. Next, I've stacked the images next to each other. As I mentioned before, I've stacked my text block and then I've made this button full width. So that's the cool thing about setting the button to fill uh, instead of fit is you can just, it'll be however big that you change its frame on the grid. So a nice full width button there. And then I've moved the artwork to the bottom. For these sections, I've just arranged the image. So the cool thing about Fluid Engine, there's a lot of cool things about it. Um, there's definitely some problems as well, and that's going to be my next video is the big problem with Fluid Engine. But and <laughs> this is the happy video, so let's keep looking at the cool things. So uh, you can extend the image all the way to the edge of the frame, so you can see it's going past the grid. So I've just made that a full image, and then I've done the same with the colored background image, and I've just placed the text block and the button block over it, and then did the same exact thing with this layout here. For this layout, super simple, just putting the image at the top, stacking the text blocks, another full width button here. This is the auto layout section. It just takes care of itself on mobile. I didn't even have to do anything. Super straightforward for this section. And then this section was great. So these images are in a completely different order than they were on desktop to make it so that they fit a little bit better on the grid. And actually, I think I've arranged them better than the original website. Because if you look at the original website on a smaller screen size, some of the people are like kind of cut off. Uh, like here on this image, the two people on the sides are completely cut off. So what I did instead is I changed the order and I felt like this one worked better here. And then that way these two people aren't cut off. So this one worked better as a horizontal image and this one worked better as a square image. 
but because I was just so easily able to like rearrange these blocks and resize them however I wanted to, I could just like play with them and, and find the layout that worked best. So this is a really nice way to present it on mobile. This section, very easy, just stacking the blocks. And then finally for this section, again, I just have the image block taking up the whole grid. I have this mailbox image aligned uh, at the bottom. And because I aligned the image to the bottom and to the right, again, it's perfectly at the bottom of the container. So a really nice mobile version presentation as well. Again, very easy to just drag the blocks where you want them on the grid. So it results in a really nice website experience and it didn't take me too much time. I think it took me about probably two hours from start to finish and that includes setting up the fonts and the colors and then uploading everything to the website and doing the layout. So Fluid Engine is allowing me to design more custom sites than I could on the last version, the classic editor. So that is a really cool aspect of Fluid Engine is that we can create a lot of these cooler designs, um, more custom layouts than we could before. So I'm really happy with that. I'm also really happy with how the mobile experience looks in the Squarespace preview. Um, looks very nice. I was so easily able to arrange everything on the grid. But in my next video, I'm going to be talking about the downsides of Fluid Engine. So there is a big problem with Fluid Engine. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next time. So if you're interested in seeing that video, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.